but there we go. In theory, we should actually get a recording of this session. So as I was saying, everything we discussed in this session is covered under the note. Well, the main things, yeah, are that things discussed here are public and that your name will get added to the, the list of attendees. Here, you can choose not to be covered under that and, and not to be covered under the IPR rules of the ITF, uh, but then you don't get to speak and you don't get to influence the direction of any standards that the ITF works on. So basically the rules are designed in such a way that if you propose something, then you're required to disclose IPR that you're aware of, that your organization owns, and that influences the standards so you can't submarine things into ITF work. It's all, it's all quite reasonable. There's heaps of stuff there in that document if you're interested in reading it. Um, this is the agenda that we put together. I've added event pub to the in progress documents. I had expected it would already be through last call, but some issues have been raised, so there's still stuff to discuss there. Um, and in progress documents always get priority in IETF meetings before we propose work because we want to progress them. Uh, we then have the drafts that we have proposed to work on soon. Um, scheduling for JS calendar could potentially be put into future work rather than proposed next drafts because we're not really ready for it yet. Uh, and then moving through there, we have the proposed new work. And push is something that's been discussed a few times and that we were waiting for Martin to produce new documents on. Um, but since Martin's here, we can talk about that straight away too. I have started a paper sheet section here. If you, there's a link that I emailed to the Calcify list. Uh, if you want to pop into this document, you can add yourself there or I can go around and ask everyone's details, um, name and affiliation, or I could just grab them off the, the CalConnect attendees list plus the, the people who I can see attending remotely here. But I'll put that together as a full list that will go into the the documents that get uploaded uh, to the IATF site. All right, let's get started. Uh, actually, first, let's get back to the agenda for a second. Anything else that people want to discuss at this session? Does this look like a reasonable agenda to work with? Remote people, are you happy? Can you hear? Can you see? <coughs> I'm slightly off camera for you, sorry. <coughs> no, can hear you fine, Brian. I'm fine with the agenda. Uh, one status update, uh, it appears while I was on vacation that managed attachments was published yesterday, RFC 8607, so that yes. is out of our queue. Congratulations everyone for getting that progressed. All right. So JS Calendar, Robert, do you want to? Yeah, so uh, JS Calendar, we, as we, we had last call, which ended um, uh, last week. We didn't receive um, substantial feedback on the mailing list on that. Um, we did, however, get uh, substantial feedback in the course of this meeting. So and my understanding, there is, um, there is uh, still room for discussion uh, on, on specific items, namely uh, in the time model. The one thing is our all-day all events, uh, which uh, were in the previous version were allowed to have a time zone. Uh, we restricted us to, to not having time zones in the, uh, in the, in the version that we uh, went in with for last call. And during the session here, we uh, came to understand that indeed there is a um, need for a couple of use cases for allowing all the events with a time zone. Um, the, uh, next step there is actually for us to understand, uh, to, to, uh, to come up with a proposal for JS calendar for this, but it, it is depending on uh, also allowing this for iCalendar. So the thought was uh, if anyone would volunteer to uh, write up an, uh, a change uh, request for iCalendar to allow time zones on date. Of, of time values that have a date type. Um, 
this is the one input that we got. The other input that we got is that there is that there came up again the discussion on if allowing or yeah if allowing to omit zero timestamps on all day events um, uh, would um, allow for better uh, usability or and, and probably even to disintegrate uh, between date and daytime properties. Uh, we will come up with a proposal for this. Um, so in summary, uh, we will have to update or we will update the draft. So we will have to take at least one more round before we can finalize the last call. Um, yeah, so I didn't come up anyone who would volunteer to write up the change for iCalendar. So I wonder if anyone in the uh, from the remote participants would be interested in that or, ha or has any opinion if or not, not to allow time zones on all day events. Okay, um, so I guess then the next step will be to um, put this, uh, uh, to, to bring up these two points also on the mailing list and uh, identify how to, if, uh, how we can find consensus on uh, what needs to be changed and uh, what should be the outcome of the change. Yep, I'd like to add that um, the other option is not allowing time zones for all the events, but having a dedicated all day flag for events with time zones. Uh, so to uh, mark them as uh, or, or indicate that they should be presented like all day events. Yes, so um, we might come up uh, with a change which basically um, changes the semantics of the is all day Boolean, which very much is tied to the time model at the moment to a property which might be named more uh, show as all day because it's just a hint for the client yeah. how to represent. And have the same chain or the same property uh, uh, in iCalendar. Yeah, that could also be an option. So it would just be a, an event that didn't even necessarily have to be an exact length of days or anything. It would be show this one as yes. an all day yeah. on whatever days it happens to cover yeah. on your calendar. So just a question. Um, if I understand correctly, currently iCalendar does not enable to add a time zone. Am I correct? On a, on a date property value type, yes. Yeah, on a okay. time, you can. Yeah. which means it's treated as a floating time event with a length of one day or have many days. It's it's set out as, but yeah, if you use type date, it becomes a floating event automatically, mm. and you can't set a time zone, which causes frustration. We discussed some things, um, cases where you, you say, "I don't want an appointment to be made on my birthday." Um, and you're doing things across multiple time zones, where is your birthday kind of considered? You know, I don't want to take a call on my birthday. Well, that will be the time zone you're in is the one that matters. Okay. Even, even if you, the day after or the day before might be a time that someone might want to call you from the other side of the world. Okay. And so, well, if we don't have this uh, iCalendar extension, it means that uh, GS Calendar I mean, uh, would provide some features iCalendar does not. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is that technically true, though? Because you could structure the event as daytime, going midnight to midnight, and specify the time zone, correct? Yes. So the, there is a way to translate between the two. It wouldn't be a, a feature that would be stuck in limbo if you try to convert from JS calendar to iCalendar? Well, the, the all day flag gets lost then. Yeah, it just means that for display purposes, it would appear, appear as a, a blocking over that time in the calendar rather than us. There's also the issues. Right. Does an all day event technically busy or just? Depends on what you said. Hey, Mike, Mike, can you speak up just a little louder? Uh, sorry, I was just trying to remember what, what the implications are for free busy uh, uh, I guess I can look at the spec. Mm. 
So it doesn't depend on all the uh, value of the state is blocks up count of the day. Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, so obviously the next step here is to propose the changes and, and put together yet another, um, I guess, last call document. Um, uh, yeah, we either that or we um, uh, we discuss, we present first the proposed change on the mailing list. Um, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I think that makes sense to present the proposed change and then um, show a new document. Yeah, you know. I think that would be better to propose that on the mailing list and then... Yeah. Um, because I, I, I don't... I don't think it's also necessary to keep compatibility within uh, between GS calendar and um, I calendar. I mean, I'm not. Um, I mean, if one is getting more used, uh, we should not. I mean, uh, make things heavier with uh, compatibility. In, I mean, not necessarily. So it was just a question like that. The other yeah. question I had regarding the two drafts is um, um, just. Um, we need to, to maybe make sure that the comments that have been addressed to um, the event pub draft, um, mostly those uh, related to security, have been properly handled in this GS calendar to avoid uh, back and forth. I don't see any problem, but I have to maybe look at, um, have a deeper view on that. But um, I think we're pretty fa safe. Uh, because we're we're using a, I mean, a more conventional format. Mm. All right, so we move on. Yes. Cool. Um, scheduling controls is me. It's a very simple spec that just adds a couple of headers to the CalDAV commands that allow you to say. I want to be treated as this user when I'm scheduling, um, and I want scheduling to not happen in some cases. So I want the server not to send any messages. I want to just be able to edit my copy of the event. Um, the, the interesting part is the, I want to be considered to be this user. There's a scheduled user address set, which I have not yet done all the tests on, but I've certainly planned to do what clients do if you say that more than one address exists. It, it's a set and it should be able to be a list of potential addresses, but I imagine most clients just use one of them. But you say, my, I'm wrong at fastmailteam.com and wrong at wrong.net and, and you know, secretary at organization. And if I receive email to any of these with an attached event that invites me, I may want to store that on my calendar. So I need some way to, to know who I am when dealing with them. And this, the additional header allows you to tell the server, I am this person as I'm interacting with this, this event so that it, it can do the correct scheduling because it needs to say whether you're updating it. Um, CalDAV in general didn't handle aliases and that concept at all well. And so this is an attempt to to allow you to override what the server would do automatically. Um, anyway, I will write up a zero one, but the, the question is how do we advertise that the server supports these headers? Um, and that I don't, I don't actually know how to do. So that's something I'd like advice from the group on. How, how would you tell? So Ken's probably actually got a good idea on Mike. You're asking how to advertise these support for these headers via CalDAV? Yeah. Let me ask this question first. If, if the server didn't advertise support, what is the client's optional path? If it's, is, it, is it just quit or does it do something different? Yeah, good point. The point I'm driving at is, does a client really need to know or is it just going to try it regardless and see what happens? Yeah, no, good point. The client will probably just try it regardless, so there's no need. If, if we determine that we do need to advertise, the quick and dirty way is to add it to the dev header 
the ever increasing in size dev header, but um, I'm sure Mike would like to see it in the server information um, document that we've been working on endlessly. Is that actually standardized? Do we need to? Okay. Did we have a right to spec? I think we did. Is there, yeah, there's, we started a draft. I don't know if it went anywhere. Um, my guess is Martin probably implemented some of it client side, but I don't know for a fact. Yeah, I did. I'm yeah. not using it, but I, I, somewhere I have an implementation of that. Yeah, you tried it against your server. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, yep. So if, if the client's just going to try it regardless, I'm not sure we need to bother with the advertising of it. All right. Um, so. I'm happy with that. Cool. All right. I will write up a zero one saying we don't need to advertise it because the clients will, will just go ahead anyway. It's advisory. Event pub. Yes. What was the uh, point to that? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I have, um, I'm partway through updating um, another spec. I think, I think there, were, there were a few points that um, came up. I lost my list. Um, I, I think I guess the one that, that sticks out is the is the um, discussion around the the source um, property, and my inclination here is having reread it is to um, drop the um, redefinition. Um, I, I when I started reading, I couldn't remember exactly why I I uh, was proposing the idea of value plus text. So that seems like a good reason for dropping it. I think the reason was the, the possible need to <coughs> embed a representation of a V card or something in the property value, but that could be done with a data URI. So it doesn't really need to be uh, redefined. So I, I think I'll just, the, 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 the um, I only need to extend its use to participant. And, uh, and I think, and that's going to be backwards compatible, so that'll be fine. Um, and then there seems to be a lot of discussion around the uh, people asking me what what does social calendaring mean? And I, I guess I need to put together something to define what I'm talking about there. Um, and I, and I, I, the, I don't know whether we need to discuss it here. I can say something, but largely it's it's. It's a move away from the traditional idea that, that it's all about meetings. It's not all about meetings anymore. It's about uh, attending public events and eventually moving into a, uh, a world where you might have meetings uh, or gatherings without any, any uh, explicit organizer. At the moment, it's all centered around the idea of an organizer with attendees. Uh, a lot of social things take place where it's just participants in, in something that's happening at a certain time. And uh, this is a sort of move in that direction. Cool, so the next step is, is to write up another draft. I need to write up another draft and answer the, uh, uh, the comments explicitly, on in the, and I'll do that on the list in a short period. All right, uh, B poll is next. Um, yeah, I I did um, upload the uh, f first draft of that, as Daniel asked. I um, it and, and we did say that it's going to need some restructuring. It uh, having reread it. I mean, Cyrus um, sent a whole bunch of. <coughs> it's about um, <coughs> event pub, and then took a look at VPOL and said that uh, as one of the editors, he'd take a look at it. Um, and I did manage to, to. I guess I guess I put his address in the in the uploaded draft. I, I tracked down an address for Eric, who was the other editor um, and author. 
that kind of thing. And he has offered to put some work into it as well. So um, I'll see whether we can get something out. In, in, uh, it's a big document, and and some of the uh, restructuring that's being proposed is 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 fairly significant. But it's it's probably worth it before we uh, go too much further. I don't know whether we can meet a whether June. Thirtieth deadline that was being proposed. Um, oh. I can't remember what there was a date that was being proposed by Daniel. I think we wanted to see it before June thirtieth. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. We'll necessarily. Reach might, that. might have been me. Be you or okay. a milestone as well. But we'll try and get it out. To get something done fairly quickly. Now. Um, but that's that's basically where we are at the moment with that. I think. Cool. Um, the name needs to have. ITF before the Calyx part to draft dash ITF dash Calyx. Oh, I have to in order to show up in the oh, tracker. That was pretty my set for it. Oh, I guess that was my editing with uh, yes, okay. I have made exactly the same mistake a few times. Yes, you remove one bit and then forget to yeah. add the uh, yeah, okay, I will I'll correct that in the uh, in, in the thing. Cool. Then it'll it'll appear on the track. <coughs> All right. So will that be another zero? Yes, there'll be another zero. Okay, that's, so, so it'll be, that's okay. It'll be zero. another zero. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll do that as well. Um, okay. Uh, it, Sorry. Yep. Subscription upgrade. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, yes, that's that's also um, been reformatted using MetaNorma. Easier to update than uh, than the XML. Um, I was taking a, a look through it to see what might need doing to it, but I think I can get that uploaded fairly quickly. I think it's 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 ready for uploading. So I'll do that in, in the next few days. Um, I've, I've got the version ready. Cool. Um, scheduling for JS calendar. There's there's a lot that we could discuss here. Um, Certainly, the idea of just adding another part to the multi part alternative with application JS calendar plus JSON, which is pretty unwieldy, but there you go. Um, as the, the JS calendar version of the event for clients seems easy enough and sensible enough to do. And then the preference order is the later one is more preferred, so you would fall back to using the text calendar part if that's. All that your system supports that should just magically work everywhere. Obviously, it needs some testing, um, and I will play with that as part of my testing what clients do. But the other thing is, we've discussed upgrading, um, basically using email as the initial communication, but then upgrading to a per event URL to allow you to directly interact with with the master copy that's stored on whoever owns its server um, by, by a caldab or a rest api or jmap or whatever uh, so that you can deal with individual events rather than having per calendar level access and there's a whole discussion that happened earlier today as well around privacy and partial calendar access and filtering and all that fun stuff that would also fall into this creating a relationship with with your participants per event rather than trying to create a, a trust relationship between entities that can then schedule with each other uh, would allow you to, to do things like move to another calendar system and just have all your new events happen there. But I don't have too much to propose at this stage other than to say I think this is, this is good work that we should be doing is trying to to bring what we had from our schedule and bring hopefully the fact that you can give multiple ways in which to reply to an event in JS calendar as a way of offering either here's the email address to send your IMIP response to or here is a better way uh, when you consider that Google send out invitations that have a link in the HTML that you can click on to a directly say yes I'm attending without needing a calendar client there's already a per event secret in there that is used to do that and so <laughs> no, 
nothing always works, but yes. Uh, yeah. <coughs> that doesn't, doesn't require you to have an account on this system because as a per event secret, and if, you, if we were to take that concept of per event secrets and, and bring it into a more general scheduling, I think that would be good. Um, any other suggestions here, any feedback we should take to designing this thing? Awesome. All right. Um, future work I schedule Redux is basically that same stuff. Uh, calendar sharing informational drafts, Ken, you were going to look at that. Yeah, I think they're <coughs> what, uh, what Everett had uh, taken from the initial Apple drafts looks good. It, um, it's probably 95% of what people have implemented right now anyways. Um, the only, thing, only spot I think we need to beef it up a little bit is how you handle scheduling with uh, shared calendars, which I think we've got a session on that tomorrow, correct? So, yeah, cool. So, at least some recommendation. I, I, I'm assuming, you know, some of this may be implement, implementation defined, but at least to provide some guidelines based on um, our, you know, working implementations and experience would, would be uh, helpful. Cool. Uh, v alarm extensions. V alarm extensions. Um, we had decided uh, the last Cal Connect to, to uh, crop out some of the um, <clears throat> more ill-defined or, or contentious pieces. One of those was default alarms. I'm not sure if people have changed their mind on that um, or if you want to try to keep that in. The, the issue there was, if I recall correctly, um, how does a client override a default alarm on the server and have the server know that that's what it's trying to do as opposed to just re having it been removed by some other client and then the server puts it back in. So uh, Apple had come up with some crazy stuff with a new uh, alarm trigger type of none, which isn't really supportive of anybody. And I think they also would leave an alarm in there with a date that was far in the past so that it would, uh, the, the server would see the alarm, not add one, but it would never trigger because we've already surpassed that time. That was, that's the, the only thing that I think was kind of, uh, kind of funky in that draft. Everything else I think we've determined is pretty straightforward in terms of alarm acknowledgement and that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, and the CalDev sync slash proxy stuff was me and I don't have anything for it, so I'm happy to kick that one way off into the future. Uh, this, this was the idea that you could manage a server and tell it that it was actually copying from another server. So um, set some properties on it that are username, password or token that allows it to then synchronize to a different CalDAV server to actually, and then it's just proxying the data through. I don't have anything ready for that. I don't think anyone else was ready to jump in and write that either. So if I'm correct, this item is mostly about um, specifying how the alarm extensions are, have to be handled. It's not the creation of a new extension, nor the deprecation of um, uh, previous extensions. No, th this particular draft um, is not currently in the working group, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's extensions, some of which are in the wild. It extends the current VLARM uh, component with a few few new properties, one of which is, is how to snooze an alarm and how to acknowledge that um, it's been canceled. Uh, how to, how to um, a client notifies the server that the alarm was acknowledged. So you don't get the same alarm on multiple devices. When you've already okay. said, yeah, got it, you know. Okay, got it. Do we want to ask for these to be brought into the working group at this point, or are we going to wait until we move other things out? I'm not sure where we, where we stand on that, guys. I think if we call for adoption for the calendar sharing and the VLM extensions, 
they're, they're both pretty self-contained. I, I guess it's more how much bandwidth you have to work on. Okay. VLM extensions is pretty simple. Um, the calendar sharing is basically three layered uh, documents. One has generic web dev notifications, one is generic web dev sharing, and then the calendar sharing piece is fairly small on top of it. Um, as I said before, I think the only place we need uh, to beef up the text is how to handle this on public calendar. So I'm, I'm willing to work on, on these. Um, I just need to know if I need to re-spin them uh, as working group drafts before I start to edit it. Well, probably the interesting question for the generic web dev stuff is, should we do it here in Telex or should we do it somewhere else? That's a very good question. I'm, I'm, maybe this needs to go through dispatch. Yeah. To see if Nottingham wants to take it or if we're going to come up with a new working group entirely. Yeah. All right. So let's let's throw the the web dev sharing one to dispatch and say, hey, we've got this work. We have calendar things built on top of it. It's in the wild already, but we'd like to bring the web dev stuff, web, the web dev part through first. Fair enough. I guess the, the, we don't really want to make it informational unless we're forced to by the fact that it's already been implemented. Um, well, it's been implemented with um, the Apple namespaces on, on the dev elements. Yeah, right. We, so. We've made them more generic, so it's pretty trivial for an implementation to support both what we document and be backwards compatible cool. with the Apple stuff. Well, in that case, we may as well do it properly because um, even if we change things at that point, it, we're not tramping over the Apple namespace. So, exactly. It's a good switch. All right. So, yeah, web, web dev to dispatch, I'd say. All right, that's all I've got slides of. Um, push. Uh, yes, push. Um, so, um, the current status is that there is a draft which is um, expired, or which expired a couple of years ago already. And um, on a recent, well, not so recent call, uh, we decided to split it into two documents. Uh, first one to specify the generic model and um, push protocol, and the other one to specify the um, specific dev um, implementation of, of the model. And um, yeah, that still needs to be done. Uh, I've started with, with that work, and um, uh, I, I hope I can get some help with the metanoma thing, because I'm also translating it or converting it to metanoma. Um, I've heard there's a, uh, or Ron is, is actively giving support uh, in that matter. So we will try to contact him and then uh, hopefully finish the first document um, quite soon. And at this point, uh, there are no open questions. We, we all are also. Um, uh, came to an agreement how to handle error message or how to return error messages um, on the last call. Right now, I cannot remember what we actually decided, but I'm pretty sure I find the information now. Um, and um, yeah, that, I, I guess it, right now it still needs to be just needs to be written down and then uh, maybe also go to dispatch because um, I'm not sure if this really. Uh, at least the generic part is not really uh, calendar specific. And so probably need to find a working group for that. Cool. So we've got um, sharing and push to dispatch. Um, just one thing. Um, <coughs> how much support to, do you expect from uh, people going to dispatch, for example? So in terms of people from here, be the, and, is that and, a 10-ish people or is it one or two or? Probably five-ish, I would say. Okay. So 
maybe before going to dispatch, um, it might be good that uh, we we had a chat with the the AD, Barry. Yeah. So, I mean, because. It, yeah, it might be, I mean, I don't know what he's going to say, but I'm, I would like to avoid that we spend a lot of time moving, yeah. um, um, I mean, having a presentation at dispatch, and then uh, we, we, need, we need to be clear on our set if we want to have that in CalDAV or if we want to have an individual um, AD sponsor um, draft or, you know, I, I think given that it's only five people and given that... Um, I'm not sure how people are willing to create a new working group. Um, I think we, we need to clarify really what would be the best path for us um, yep. to go to that because uh, we can be good at creating process. Uh, let's reduce that um, path. And sharing certainly has a big calendar component. That's where most of the interest is. Yeah. Counter and VCOG. Um, yeah. That's where the discussion can be. So there, there probably is more point in keeping that here than anywhere else. Yeah, I guess. It happens to yeah. be. It's, it's an HTTP level thing, but maybe it is. All right. Um, I'll have a chat with Barry. Yeah, the big question from my standpoint is how involved the HTTP and the dev folks want to be involved with the you know the, the generic dev pieces of it. Yeah, Mark, Mark, Julian, uh, Martin Thompson, that whole crew. Yeah, I think I have no concern about um, if we're changing something in HTTP or adding some of the stuff. Um, there would be uh, I expect Martin Nottingham to be pretty reactive yeah um, and um, it might be the only tricky part we have to to address um, not to to fall down into the, the case we where we have a disagreement with the HTTP com community and then we don't know how to move that uh, things forward so yeah I have no real trouble um, I mean no concern about uh, how, I mean, I, I think they're willing to provide some feedbacks. Um, it's not that we have another working group that's um, going to influence uh, them to provide feedbacks or not. I mean, it's a completely orthogonal. Cool. I'm, I'm just tracking down here. Uh, what else? So we're going to do a call for adoption for VLM extensions. Obviously, the, the ongoing documents have ongoing work on them. Vpol, I believe we've already done a call for adoption for. But I will double check. And if not, I will call for adoption of that. Yeah, so just one thing. I think the, the chat should be only with Barry. OK, yeah. And then any questions related to HTTP should be sent to the HTTP working group. Yeah. And people will answer to that. I mean, uh, cool. All right. Um, anything else? We seem to have finished in about half the time we, we set aside for this. Which is a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah. How do people from CalConnect think it's useful to meet um, and to have a look at a to browse all the drafts and uh, things. I think the good thing is we would do it anyway. And so we can do it in a combined fashion that it's only been done once. It really helps Ron doing this only once, yeah. not just twice. <laughs> and I think the interaction is important between those entities to, to, to help you see what we're doing and uh, we getting more in, 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 in information about the process going there. I really like the approach. Okay, looks to me good because we provide some more visibility and uh, 
AD uh, not um, or ISG is not upset to say, well, oh, oh, we haven't seen those drafts coming, and uh, so I think that's a a good way to to progress. Cool. I'll try and plan for one in October for the next Cal Connect as well. Then. Thanks, Dave. All right, well, if <coughs> everyone's done, then uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thanks, Daniel. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I couldn't join the talk of Steve because I had to let my second factor with me. Oh, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> it's up in the, in the room. Yeah. <laughs>